The following was recorded during the COVID-19 pandemic through Zoom meetings in accordance with local health guidelines. Hi, I'm Mike Maloney, and welcome to another CSRM podcast. Today's episode is hosted by Dr. Greg Linville. Hi, welcome back. We're with another segment with our good friend John Keating with the NAS in Grove City, Ohio, just near Columbus. Buckeye fan. You got to be a Buckeye fan down there. Sorry for those others that are maize and blue people. Uh, but, you know, uh, we're all in the kingdom. We're going to have to work it out someday, John. But uh, just as long as we're winning here on earth, we're all right, right? <laughs> That's right. 3,000 days. But we'll keep counting. <laughs> there you go. Um, we have been talking. If you missed the first couple of times with John, you, you missed some great stuff, and we encourage you to go back in the archives and pick up those podcasts. And we got a sense of where John's heart was and his ministry journey, some of the things that he's trying to do to stay fresh with Jesus and keep the, keep the things moving. And he outlined a, a really robust ministry that they have and, and the various outreach missions that they do there. And they've got hundreds of, of local church missionaries that are reaching out in those leagues and, and various things that they're doing. So if you want more of that information, just go back in the archives and, and that'll help you. But we talked a little bit to prepare for this one about that COVID has, has had an impact on what we do in sports rec and fitness. And how has that impacted you and the NAS and what you do? What's, what's happened there? Yeah, well, doctor, thanks for having me on here again today, and uh, w welcome to all of our listeners. You are absolutely right. Uh, if you've listened to the previous uh, podcast talks that we've done together, you know that uh, we utilize the blessings of our facilities to engage in outreach in the community, inviting them into our building to uh, be a part of leagues and play different sports and meet people and ultimately bring them to an intentional moment with Christ. Well, that all uh, was put on pause when our building was closed and people weren't able to gather uh, just as much as they weren't able to gather on Sunday mornings for worship. Uh, we weren't able to gather for our youth leagues, for our adult leagues. And that was really tough. Um, but it wasn't something that we thought, well, we're just going to take a sabbatical here and leave things off to the side. We knew that uh, God's uh, calling to reach people has overcome even greater hurdles before. And so we had to find ways to keep people connected. Something I actually utilized was from CSRM, one of the talks about esports that you guys had. And so I uh, listened to that and got some ideas. I connected with some younger uh, gamers uh, who know far more about the video game and online gaming. And so we used that. We started the NAS esports uh, here and held some tournaments and got some really cool moments for people just being able to converse and talk to others while they were quarantined. And people can grab hold of even those on the archives as well of the podcasts and various things. It's, it's something that is on the front end for a lot of people, but it's, I think it's going to not just be during COVID, but it'll probably continue on in the future. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that is a continuing way of sports as you see even colleges universities starting those esports teams and giving scholarships for that now uh, you're right it's it's a great avenue and for a church it's an easy way to operate without the facilities without the time to just do some of that scheduling and, and planning uh, all online it's a great avenue to connect and some great conversations that happened there through that and then we had to get creative thankfully we you know, all of us kind of went into this in the springtime and leading into the summer, but we found a lot of people had more time on their hands. They were available. Um, and so, and, 
using resources, we started connecting to uh, local government regulations, but also finding uh, how, uh, as we're dealing with kids and youth, how schools and the high school system were testing and protecting and distancing and sanitizing equipment uh, that we found some of the avenues to keep some sports and outdoor sports opportunities alive because of those guidelines that were in place that we were able to work around some of those also. Um, and then, you know, one of the biggest things is the golf industry. Man, they stayed afloat and it was a record year because people were able to get outside. And so we used our golf uh, ministry, we call the Nasters, uh, to really took off. And guys were looking to be involved and engaged uh, in some new ways. And so there were plenty of opportunities there that uh, we just had to pivot a little bit, but we definitely didn't call it quits. So the Lord and, bless. And one of the things that we've heard from a lot of folks that are in your shoes is that there's always been that difficulty of, of grabbing somebody that's on your field or your court, or in your case, the, the course, the golf course, and moving them from there into the sanctuary or into the, the body life of the church. And one of the things that a lot of folks in your position have told us is that in some ways now that all of these churches, I'd say probably 90 plus percent of, of congregations, at least around America, have gone to an online version of their worship service, that people who would never come on a Lord's Day morning and sit in a pew at your church are coming via the Internet. And you, guys like you, have been able to remind your senior pastor or your worship leader, we know the Holy Spirit's a worship leader, but the person who's got the guitar or plays the organ or whatever, to remember, we got people listening. We got people tuning in. And what we're seeing is this has given the sports and rec and fitness industry of the church, those missions, an added bonus to be able to get them to experience that worship. Have you had any of that? Yeah, absolutely, doctor. I think you are touching on something there that is important for all church leaders, even outside of sports and athletic ministry, is that people are viewing and looking and watching your services and your ministry far before they'll even participate and show up. Um, they are very much cued in on what you're doing and what to look at and, and how things appear before they choose to involve themselves. And we use sports as an outreach tool intentionally. Um, we don't put requirements on attendance for people to be a part of our leagues. Uh, we want to build relationships. We know that all people are going to spend time doing things that they value. And so some of them have our church website, things like that. They know who we are and why we're there. We're building relationships then that we're seeing the fruit of those people starting to engage even beyond just the time on the ball field. And, you know, one of the things you mentioned is there's no requirements about coming. And I mentioned to you that I had been hired at a church and they, I was the first one. And you had a similar experience. You might have been the second, but you were you were pretty early in the in the genesis of that whole thing. So I never will forget a good good friend and mentor to me, Rich Garrett. He said, "We're not doing that anymore. It used to be if you wanted to play on a softball team, you had to come twice a month for worship service. So we're not doing that anymore." And the pastor was kind of upset with them. And after he talked to him, he understood, and Rich really convinced me. He said, "You know what?" I just say they have to come one time. And if our worship service isn't relevant enough, if it isn't solid enough for them to want to come back, then they're going to resent coming anyway. And so we want to make our worship service relevant to that person who is far from Jesus. And I think there's some, uh, some real wisdom in that. And so uh, it's an interesting dynamic there, isn't it? But now, you, you are also thinking in a bigger uh, perspective here. You, you're, 
What, what have you done? What has the NAS done to try to incorporate sports rec fitness into a holistic way of going with your church? How's it incorporating what you do into the overall? Well, I, to be honest, we have incredible leadership here from our senior leadership to our church board um, to prioritize sports and recognizing that it is a passion of our community. It's a place that people are spending a lot of time. And so the investment into sports ministry, they also are seeing and reaping that harvest uh, because of that. Um, they are very intentional about putting together resources for equipment and helping us get the word out to promote and share the stories of how God is moving, even in a, a basketball court or through a youth league. I'll also say credit to our leaders. You know, our senior pastor was referring third and fourth grade boys basketball games this winter. And people see that um, we are using sports as an avenue for mission trips. Uh, we've been, down in Puerto Rico in 2019 and 2020, uh, using that as a tool to not just have our people engaged in the community, but extending beyond that and inviting athletes to go down there and be a part of those experiences. Uh, so there's a true investment and in, in buy-in from our leadership, um, but also people. They're building relationships, and that's a huge drawback. If you want people to connect, how many times are leaders and pastors up there saying, hey, invite somebody to come to church or invite somebody. Well, oftentimes those invitations are offered without a real relationship existing between people. And so if they're going to be a part of a 10-week league and they're on your team or you're playing them, you're going to get time, you know, an hour or so for 10 straight weeks of being with these people. That's great relationship time to build. And then when you say, hey, we've already done this together for 10 weeks, come be a part of a service. Come check this out. Um, they're more open to that because they know you. And it's not just walking into a new setting uh, blindly. So that's a that's a great avenue uh, and, and something that our church has uh, latched onto. And the Lord has definitely blessed that. The, the more that we can intentionally going back to a segment or two ago where you talked everything has to be intentional the more intentional we can be in that regard the, the better it's going to be and the, and, and the more successful that we're going to to be and and i'm thinking here about a couple of connections that i think you i'm going to ask you even for some of your own experience on this because it is one thing we use the you and who you are the person who's sitting in the pew, and this is not a, a you as a sheep, but a you as a Y-O-U, and the who is the person that's a member of your family, uh, somebody you co-work with, you, you go to school with, and who are you inviting to come and join you in the Masters, in your case, or a youth league, what have you. But then also, how can we shepherd them relationally the next step and i think what I've, if i heard you correctly the big thing is to build those kind of relationships with them so that they'll follow you into the sanctuary and then it goes back to our worship leaders again i, I never will forget somebody said I, I finally got somebody off the softball team and they came and they sat there and the preacher was preaching from second timothy and about 10 minutes into the sermon, the, the guy I invited leaned over and said, who is first Timothy? Who is the first Timothy? And, and we don't even understand, but sometimes we have to help our people understand that. And I'm going to do one commercial before you answer all this. And that is that the latest book when this was originally recorded was Scent. The book is called Scent, S-E-N-T. And it is missiology for the sports outreach movement. In other words, how do we know how to do our mission? And in that, there's a segment that does exactly what you had indicated when you said our pastor was refereeing a youth league. And it makes all this list of things that a somebody that's on the church staff can do. They can play in a volleyball league. 
They can coach a team. They There's all kinds. I'm not going to ruin the book for you, but you need to go buy the book and it'll give you how to do that. But share with us even anything along that line. And then has anybody actually come to faith? And what's happening with them that have? Yeah, you know, going back to that word intentional, one thing we incorporate is uh, we don't hide who we are. We don't hide where we're from. And there are people uh, who may be joining our team. Um, maybe they don't, don't even attend, but they were invited by a friend to be a part of this league. They get a jersey too. And they uh, are a part of the team. And giving them a jersey says you are – uh, invited to be here. You're a part of this from the beginning. And then every single game or practice or time together, we have an intentional moment of prayer. And there is something when we are circled around a putting green, uh, on a sand volleyball net, a home plate, inviting the team that you just played that isn't a church team. They're a, a local bar team or you know, sponsored by a business to come around home plate. The response that we have gotten is overwhelmingly 95% of those teams and people will join you just for a time of prayer. They will. If you say, hey, we're just going to invite you to pray. We're going to pray here uh, to start our week. And you give them an intentional moment of prayer and bringing them with you before the Lord, asking them what you can pray about or anything positive that's going on in their life. And uh, people will start to soften up to that and they really respond. And um, I could go into countless number of stories. We had an umpire who was a part of uh, umpiring one of our leagues that he started joining those prayers. And then he enjoyed it so much, he put his own team in the same league we were in so he could uh, be a part of those leagues even more. The next thing you know, two seasons later, he's the pitcher on our team, and he's coming on Sunday uh, and, and a part of our league. I How had a guy that? that coached T-ball. His, he, it was a dad who was not attending church at all. For whatever reason, he did not want to. His kids were a part of the T-ball league. His wife would come to church without him. And for two years, he signed up, and he heard we had men's basketball league. He signed up for that. He joined a golf league. We didn't see this guy walk through the doors on a Sunday morning for over two years. Doctor, I got to baptize that guy last month for the first time. And you want to see cool. the response of his family and people online uh, because he reached out, sent a message, and said, you guys have been accepting of me and have been so welcoming to my family. That's what I need in my life. And I recognize that need is Jesus. And through being in a community and on a team from the beginning, uh, he was able to be a part of that. And he's taken his next step toward Jesus Christ. So, you know, another commercial is our, our second book in our Institutes of Sports Outreach book series. And it, it talks about what you just talked about, the five Bs of sports outreach. And the first one is to belong. That's This is what you said. They just come and they belong to your sports community. And that it's out of that that they come to belief in Jesus. The second B is belief. And sometimes we get that reverse. We think you got to believe before you can know. To do true outreach, we go and they belong to the community. Then they come to belief. And then one of the most overlooked is baptism. And that is such a huge encouragement to everybody, like you just indicated. But so many of our sports ministries, they don't go to that third B, and, and they don't baptize. Now, some of that may be because they're of a, a, a faith tradition that is, well, you baptize an infant. But even those traditions have what they call confirmation. And if they have now been baptized as an infant, now they can get up in front of the church and be confirmed. That public profession of faith is so important. And if you want the last two Bs, you're going to go buy the book. But th those are the first three. But I, I commend you because without the baptism, it doesn't really happen a lot of times. Any other thoughts about how to incorporate this and any other success story that, that you have? What, what's, uh, 
what's God laying on your heart for kind of the last words here of encouragement to others that are watching or listening? Yeah, you know, I want to encourage others who have listened and if they've listened the last couple of times, you don't have to be the best athlete. You don't have to be the most talented uh, or the most outgoing personality. The Lord just wants your availability. If you and your church are motivated to reach people, sports is an avenue that people are still giving time to engage with. And so you may feel as a pastor, you can't walk into a bar and sit next to somebody. You can't go to some of the places or view some of the things that people are doing. And that's true. But you can join them on a ball field. You can invite them to a round of golf. Um, and there is plenty that the Holy Spirit can do to fill the gap in our in our methods and in our moments. You just have to make yourself available. And the Lord will move and work. And uh, I'm a testament to, to the work that he is doing and grateful that he's continuing to allow us to be a part of that here. What a joy and privilege it is, isn't it? Absolutely. To go and be able to reach those who are far from Jesus in this church and do it in such a fun and enjoyable way. Uh, it's, it just really is a blessing. Maybe somebody that's tuned into this somehow is considering sports and rec ministry as, as, a, as their profession or their calling, their vocation. We really encourage you. We, uh, John and I share that this just is such a, it's such a, we get such a kick out of it. And, and yet it's so much fun to know that, that it is literally changing people's for eternity. And that's what we're all about. I can't thank you enough for being with us, my friend. And I look forward to future collaborations with you. And I know that I'll uh, put a little, little commercial. I know that you're part of a group that meets kind of monthly, uh, at least I think monthly, that folks just like yourself throughout the Columbus area. And this is something that CSRM is pioneering a around the country and even the world to try to get local people together. And so if you don't have a group like that going, let us know. We'll help you do it. And it's something that will really bolster what you do in your church and it will grow the whole community. And the more that you're strengthened by numbers in your community, by other churches, the more it's going to be acceptable across the board. So we've got a lot, a lot of things that we can do together. And John, we're also hoping that you're going to be with us at Reach uh, this coming September. It depends on when you watch us, but that'll be September of 2021. And you're going to meet folks like John and others. It's just going to be a great time. And just stay in touch with us in any way that we can. Last words, John, any last encouragement? You know, thanks again, doctor, for having me. You know, for anyone listening, um, I just want to say if I can help you or support you, answer questions, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are so many resources and, that are out there. I'd be happy to share uh, some of our experiences and resources with anybody listening here, doctor, because uh, it's for the benefit of the kingdom. And uh, that's absolutely all about. All right, that's it. And uh, if you missed the first two, they're archived. Go get them. And thanks so much, John, for your time with us today. We'll talk to you all next time. The CSRM Podcast is a production of the Association of Church Sports and Recreation Ministers and their video production house, Overwhelming Victory Flicks. Dr. Greg Linville is the executive producer, and Andrew Fouts is associate producer and editor. For more information about CSRM, visit csrm.org. For more information about Overwhelming Victory, visit overwhelmingvictory.org. The CSRM podcast is the flagship member of a new podcast network called Overwhelming Victory Radio. For more information on Overwhelming Victory Radio or to listen to our partner podcasts, visit overwhelmingvictory.org backslash OV radio. For CSRM podcasts, I'm Mike Maloney. Have a blessed day.